Welcome to Learn, Love, Live, Code, a show where I teach short coding tutorials in five minutes or less. This week, I will walk you through adding some style to dropdowns using CSS3. Then we will create a JavaScript object, including a key value pair, and loop through the object to populate a dropdown with both value and text. Finally, we will implement some ninja error handling to make sure our sort function runs properly. The code for the static web page we will begin with in this lesson is the code we ended with last week. You can get the code from the transcript of this episode on my blog at hofstech.com slash learn love live code. The links for all of these things are also in the description for your convenience. First, let's create a new CSS class called dropdown control. In this class, we will set the height and width of the dropdown, then the padding, 8 pixels applies to the top and bottom, 16 applies to the left and right, font size, and a transparent border to give our dropdown a flat look. And remember to apply the dropdown control CSS class to each select tag. In the populate dropdowns function, change the options array to a JavaScript object using key value pairs for each superhero. The key will be used for the object tag value attribute and the value will be used for the inner text. Now that we are using a JavaScript object and not an array, we need to change the second loop to var item in options. This is a best practice because the for in statement iterates over only the innumerable properties of an object. We can set the option tag value attribute by adding option.value equals item. To set the inner text, we need to change option.text and make it equal to options with the item index. This will return the value from the key value pair for the current item. Save and load your web page in a browser just to make sure the dropdowns are populating correctly. Right click on any of the dropdowns and select Inspect Element. Here you will see that our dropdown options now have a value as well as the inner text. In the real world, when you are populating dropdowns using data from a database, it is a best practice to pass the data between JavaScript and the database using the value attribute versus the option text. Let's look at an example of what I'm talking about in the sort heroes function. First, move the options JavaScript object outside of the populate dropdowns function to make it a global variable because we will need to use it in the sort heroes function. In a real world project, you would create the JavaScript object from data in a database, which you would only want to do once in the global variables to reduce page load time. In sort heroes, change the dropdown text variables to value because we want to match the options selected based on the value and not the inner text. Change the second loop to a for in loop to iterate through the JavaScript object options, and then change heroes array i to options hero to output the value from the key value pair for the current item. But wait, we also need to make sure that the current value from the key value pair equals the current item in the heroes array. So we need to add an if statement making sure they're equal. And just for good measure, let's discard the value if the default option is selected. We can do that by adding an else to our if statement and removing any default options from the array using the splice method. We're passing some parameters here, including the current index and the number one, which will result in the removal of one item from the array. Next, we want to alert the user if they have not selected at least two superheroes to sort. Let's add an easy if statement to take care of that for us. We only want to output our sorted hero string to the sort results div if there are no errors, so we will put that inside of our if statement, checking that the heroes array includes more than one item. Then in our else statement, we set some text for an alert. Save and load your page. Test this a number of times, selecting a different number of superheroes from your dropdown. As you can see, we have improved the user experience a great deal by anticipating user error and accounting for it. Next week, we will continue to add to this page and error handling. What would happen if the user selected the same superhero more than once? We should account for that. Have a great week and happy coding. Mm -hmm.